Hey, what's going on YouTube? If this is your first time here and you don't already know, I tow a fifth wheel camper with my Tacoma. I know what you're thinking. Don't worry about it. It's just a little guy. But I've had questions about the gooseneck hitch that I have in my Tacoma. And that's what we're gonna go over today. And that's coming up. So when I first got my camper, I had a 2002 Tacoma and I was towing it with that one originally. For that setup, I just got a couple of universal rails and a B&W fifth wheel hitch that broke into two pieces that I would lug in and out of the bed. The rails would stay in the bed of the truck all the time. When I got my 2017, I wanted to see if I could do something a little bit cleaner and nicer. So I wanted to see if I could do a gooseneck hitch. Gooseneck hitch mounts under the bottom side of the bed and leaves the inside of the bed flush and clean and then there's nothing in the way. What I was thinking is I would get an adapter to use the BNW hitch with that. But as I progressed through my research to see if I could do the gooseneck hitch, I decided I wanted to go with a Reese goose box, which changes out the whole pin box on the trailer. And that way, all I have to do is drop a ball into the bed of my truck instead of lugging a huge fifth wheel hitch in and out of my truck. It does break into two pieces, but still it's kind of heavy. And if you can't tell, I have dental floss hanging out of my sleeves. So it does get pretty heavy. I was even thinking of like setting up some sort of winch in, in the garage here so that I could just hook up to it, lift it up. And then when I go camping, I can just lower it back down. But I found the Reese Goose box and decided to go with that. And if you're curious about that Reese Goose box and my feelings about it, there should be a couple of videos in my camper playlist. So go check those out after this video if you want. And now I wanna give you a closer up look of what the hitch looks like in my truck. Part of it is from the Tundra gooseneck hitch and the other parts are custom. Obviously they don't make a gooseneck hitch for the Tacoma for obvious reasons. So I had to make it work for the Tacoma. So we're underneath the truck now. I did remove the spare tire up here so that it'll be easier to show you the hitch. But the main part of it right here is from the Tundra gooseneck hitch along with these side rails. And then I didn't use the end rails out of the Tundra because they would not work for my truck. So I had to come up with something different. As you can see here, the bottom side of the Tacoma's bed has all this ribbing. That's to add strength to it because it's a composite bed. And you might think that uh, it wouldn't be a good idea to cut out all that ribbing because of the support. But my thought process was the gooseneck hitch is gonna add that strength back in and then some. So I wasn't worried about any sort of strength issues because that hitch butts up against the bottom of the bed. So you might be able to see some of the cutting right here. I had to cut it flush with the bed in order to get the hitch in there. I spent countless hours thinking about how I was gonna do this to see if it was even possible. And I cannot say that this was an easy thing to do. So as you can see, there's some components here. There's some wiring here. There's the charcoal canister right here and that stuff is really close to the gooseneck hitch. There's still enough room. The biggest issue that I had when I installed this was over on this side. As you can see, the brake lines come in here. So one brake line ended up going right here, and then the other one kind of went through a hole between the bracket and the hitch. So I did have to kind of reshape those brake lines. They're metal up on this side and then they're rubber on this side. I also had to reshape the brackets just a little bit to get them to work. It definitely got tight on this side. It was not the easiest thing to do. I'm hoping that the camera will pick them up, but here's a couple of the brackets that I had made. I made up templates out of cardboard and I have been asked if I have those templates. I do not have those templates any longer, but these are the brackets that I had made up. There's two of them here, 
And because I was concerned with this not being designed for the Tacoma and with strength, I, was, uh, I had a little bit of concerns. So I had them make this out of three eighths inch thick steel. The rest of the hitch is made out of quarter inch. So I felt like the three eighths was more than adequate. So the brackets bolt to the hitch here and here. And it, then this particular bracket bolts through the frame and into a bracket on the outside. The same thing with the other one. It has a bolt going through the frame and to a bracket on the outside. There are also two more bolts up in here that go through and meet up with the bracket on the outside. On this side, the challenge was the exhaust. So this side's a little bit harder to get up into just because the exhaust is in the way, but hopefully you can get an idea of those brackets and maybe we can even get an angle of the bolts that are up there. I'm gonna try my best here. We're in a tight spot. They might be a little out of focus, but you might be able to see those bolts in there. They go through the top. And the same thing, they, are, they bolt through the frame. Each bracket has two bolts going to the hitch, and maybe you can see those up in there. I'm gonna try and refocus. I don't have enough hands here. All right, there we go. Now maybe you can see the bolts that are up there and go through the bracket into the gooseneck hitch. Now, I don't know how well you can see it, but there's also a big fat bolt that's kind of towards the center, but towards the bottom of the frame here. That actually goes down to the Firestone Ride Right or Helper Springs, but that also goes through the frame and through the outside bracket. So it's all bolted together. And then same thing on this side. I have a nice fat bolt going through the air helper spring, through the frame and to the bracket on the outside. It's all tied together. Now I took the wheel off here to make it easier to show you this. This is the driver side. So this is the left rear. This is the outside bracket that I made or had made. I just uh, made a cardboard template and took it to a machine shop and they were able to cut this out for me. We got four bolts going through the frame and bolting to those brackets. We have this huge bolt going through the frame, through this bracket and into the bracket for the airbags. And then this bracket right here is for the airbags as well, but that's not part of the hitch. And then this one is just going through the frame and bolting the bracket to the frame. It doesn't go to the inside brackets. This is just to the frame. There's a notch here for the pull handle so that I can install the ball. I had to get creative with it and go around the bracket here and around the support here. If I really wanted to get crazy, I could weld it in here, but I think this is more than adequate. This is actually more than what the hitch has for the Tundra. So I have more bolts bolting it to the frame and the truck and all together than what the hitch originally had. This is the passenger side or the right rear. It got too narrow down in here, so I couldn't drop it down like I did for the other side. So I, did, I chose not to have the bracket come down. So this is just going through the frame and into the inside bracket. Then again, we have the two bolts that go to the top sides of the brackets, the one bolt to the bracket, and then this last bolt is just to the frame. It doesn't go to the bracket. Again, we also have the large bolt going to the airbags. Now, the reason why I'm doing this video is I've had a lot of questions about the gooseneck hitch, but I also had questions about installing the ball into the bed of my truck and what that looks like. So that's what I'm going to show you right now. In the center of the truck here, we have three cutouts in the bed mat. The outside ones are for the chain loops to hook safety chains to, and then the center is for a cover that goes over the 
the ball hole, whatever you want to call it. Some of the other B&W hitches have a ball that you can flip over, but for the Tundra, they don't have that. I'm guessing on the Tundra, there's something that's in the way just underneath it that the ball would hit. So with the Tundra hitch, they give you this cover. So the first thing we got to do is we got to come in here, pull the handle, and then give it a little bit of a twist and it locks it in place. And then we can get into the bed. I keep the ball right here. I just uh, made some foam that I cut out for the shape of the ball so it wouldn't slide around in my cubby. And so we have the ball right here. You lift the cover off and drop the ball down in here. Once the ball's in there, we come back here to the handle. We give it a twist to unlock it. And then it goes in and back in place. And that's all you have to do is just slides in and locks the ball. And that's what it looks like when the ball is installed. And as you can see, installing the ball in the bed of my truck is a whole lot easier than lugging a huge hitch in and out. It's quicker, it's cleaner. I don't have rails in the bed of my truck. On the downside, when I went from the 2002 to the 2017, I could have just gotten universal rails again. Universal rails cost about a hundred bucks at the time. This setup with everything, with the B&W hitch for the Tundra, my custom brackets and the Reese Goose box cost about $2,000 compared to $100. So that's the price I paid for a nice clean bed and convenience and ease of hookup. I think it was worth it. I think the hitch toes are really nice. It's really smooth. I absolutely love that hitch. I think it's better than having the rails in the bed of my truck, although it was a whole lot of work. Uh, I actually uh, have a whole bunch of anxiety about getting into an accident and having to do this again to a new truck if I could even find a new truck in this configuration. Love my Tacoma because it's an orange, four door, six foot bed, TRD off-road, four wheel drive, of course. And uh, I don't think that they have so many of them or are easy to find anymore. I don't even know if they have an orange anymore. I haven't even been seeing them. But I hope this helps some of you guys out and answers some of the questions that you guys have. It was definitely a custom install. The brackets alone that I had custom made were about $600. The Tundra hitch was like $400. And then the Reese Goose box was another thousand. That's how we get to the $2,000 that it cost to do this. But again, I think it was worth it. Next week, we are going to do hopefully a better detailed video than what we did the last time. And I'm gonna show you the Firestone Ride Right airbags again because I've also had questions about those. So check that video out next week. For more Tacoma videos, go ahead and check out my Tacoma playlist and we will catch you guys on the next one. See ya.